One thing we know about Cam Thomas is he can certainly score. He showed flashes of this his first two seasons, but in his first year as a primary starter, averaged 22.5 points per game. Despite the improvement in his age 22 season, he's polarizing to many. Thomas displays a lot of tough shot making, which for some fans brings them back to their favorite scorers of the early to mid-2000s. On the other hand, others criticize that and see him purely as a volume shooter. The most importantly, can Thomas build off the skills he showed this past year for what will be an expanded role with the Nets? I'm going to take a deeper dive into his offensive game and find out. A massive improvement in Thomas's game this past year was shooting off the catch where he ranked in the 87th percentile. Given his free throw shooting and touch he shows on floaters, showing growth here isn't incredibly surprising. Though there was a drastic difference in his performance from three, as Thomas shot 42% on his attempts off the catch compared to 32% off the dribble. While it can be tough to find these shots for Thomas if he's primarily handling the ball, there are some ways the Nets can do this. Here Thomas starts by receiving the handoff from Dennis Schroeder. He then passes it to Daron Sharp for what you would assume is to set up a dribble handoff. Though as Thomas starts working his way towards the ball, he cuts to the three-point line and creates space. Once Thomas receives the ball, there isn't enough time for his defender to recover or the center's defender to rotate, and Thomas knocks down the open three. An encouraging sign for Thomas is he had more responsibilities in pick and roll and showed improved efficiency scoring out of the action. Despite struggles shooting from three off the dribble, Thomas was able to show his scoring ability from all levels out of the action. Here Thomas is bringing the ball up, and once he takes a dribble inside half court, Jalen Wilson sets a quick go screen. Doing this forces Bobby Portis, who is defending the top of the key, to rotate to Wilson. Now you're left with Thomas getting downhill, his initial defender, a screener, and Brooke Lopez in drop coverage. Thomas changes speeds, and with Lopez in drop, he's prepared to defend the rim. It allows for Thomas to have space off the dribble, and he makes them pay hitting the mid-range runner. While Thomas isn't known for his playmaking, he did show some ability to create for others out of pick and roll, and saw a jump in assists after the All-Star break. This example, Thomas is running side pick and roll, and as he utilizes the screen, look at the attention he commands. The screener's defender switches onto him, Thomas's defender works through the screen, and a third defender also has eyes on Thomas. That much attention means the Nets will have an advantage. Thomas gets the ball to a rolling Nick Claxton, who now has a drastic size advantage over the shorter defender, who had to rotate, and while Claxton could kick it out for an open three, he takes the easy points with the layup. This is another side pick and roll with Thomas. As he uses the screen, the screener's defender rotates to Thomas, but look at the ball pressure the Pacers put on him here. They're blitzing Thomas in an effort to get him to pick up his dribble and take the ball out of his hands. This is something Thomas could see a lot of this upcoming season, though if executed properly, can lead to advantages. Thomas finds an open Nick Claxton, who finds no resistance in the paint and throws down the dunk. Though Thomas showed he can make some reads and create out of the action, he did have some struggles with turnovers that he can improve. Considering the defensive attention he's going to receive, this is very important. Here the Heat are in zone defense, which would limit switching and pick and roll. As Thomas starts going downhill, you can see Cam Johnson cutting from the left corner. While it appears the Heat might not notice, they're aware of it happening. As Thomas drives further, you can see Jimmy Butler start rotating towards Johnson. While Johnson still appears open, Thomas makes the pass, and Butler jumps the passing lane for a steal. There are also some examples where Thomas has the right idea, but with more repetition, he'll know to avoid the passes. Here Thomas is in high pick and roll, where he attracts his initial defender Austin Reeves and Anthony Davis switching after the screen. As Thomas gets downhill, you can see that he notices a roll in Claxton. Throwing a pass over or around Anthony Davis is difficult, but if you were to do it, this would be the time. Instead, Thomas drives deeper into the paint, and when he tries a wraparound pass in the air, Davis is right there to deflect it, and the ball goes off Thomas for a turnover. Hiring Jordy Fernandez from the Kings, the Nets could utilize handoffs similarly to how the Kings did with De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis. The good news is Thomas got plenty of experience utilizing handoffs this past year and was above average scoring out of the action. This is a baseline out of bounds play where right as Sharp catches the ball, Thomas creates space running towards him. Now that he has the ball going downhill, look what this creates. Thomas still has a step on his defender, and the opposing center has to account for the roller. Thomas capitalizes and hits another floater off the dribble. The threat of Thomas scoring out of the action can allow him to create for others, too. This time the Nets operate in the half court, and Thomas gets the handoff in the left slot. Though after Thomas takes one dribble, look at the defense. He draws two defenders, including the one who is guarding the rolling Nick Claxton. As a result, nobody is in the paint. Thomas makes the right read, and Claxton finishes the dunk through contact. 
So what leads to some of the questions about Thomas's inefficiency? The degree of difficulty on some of the shots he takes doesn't help, though I did notice something that plays a role. Thomas had a lot of possessions that came late in the shot clock. He ranked ninth in the NBA in possessions per game in this scenario, though with this comes a lot of difficult shot attempts just to beat the shot clock. Thomas took 148 shots in the last four seconds of the shot clock this past season, and made just 35% of them. Just having fewer of those attempts would help his efficiency. With that said, Thomas does do a very good job of getting to the free throw line. His free throw rate, which is free throw attempts divided by shot attempts, is higher than notable guards such as De'Aaron Fox, Tyrese Maxey, and Stephen Curry. In conclusion, there were some nice takeaways from Thomas's offensive game this past season. He showed great improvement shooting off the catch, and also grew as a creator for himself and others out of pick and roll. There's also reason to believe if the Nets do incorporate more handoffs this year, Thomas will be able to do similar things out of the action. Though as the Nets' clear primary option this year, the strides Thomas makes as a facilitator given the defensive attention he'll receive will be important when assessing what he can truly become as a player. Turning 23 later this year, Thomas has room to continue growing, and it'll be fascinating to see if he can change some narratives surrounding his game. If you made it this far, thank you, and if you enjoyed the video, don't hesitate to like and subscribe to stay up to date on my latest basketball analysis.